What I've got on display right now are a primed grasshopper, just in regular gray. I've got the mid-phase that I did ahead of time in order to make sure that we wouldn't have to wait for the wash to dry. And then I've got the goal, which is the finished product, is a yellow overall miniature that doesn't take too long to do and looks great on the table. So without any further delay, we'll go ahead and get started. Today I'm going to be using a number four brush, just a cheap, cheap brush, and I'll explain some of that as we're waiting for the paint to dry. We'll be starting out with Viejo Model Color Deep Yellow. Getting our base coat down. Just trying to get the paint all over the entire model. I want it in every recess and crack. I want a good coat over the primer. You can wash over primer to get the shadows on recesses, but if you don't prime in the color you're planning on working with, it doesn't really help you out. If I was doing a gray or a white or one of the uh, Army Painter colors that you can get, that would be something I would start from. The other thing too to consider is that if we put a white primer down to do yellow, since it's a light color, if we were to just put a brown or a dark wash down, when we go back to do our coating, if we were to just dry brush, the edges where you want it darker would almost assuredly end up lighter. So this allows for a bit of a transition from the recessed areas where the wash is going to settle down and the highlight color or the base color that we'll be using. So it'll look more visually appealing, give you a little better contrast, and look more appropriate for the scale that we're painting at. I'm working with a slightly thin yellow. I don't want it super water thin, but I also don't want it so thick that it starts to obscure a lot of the detail. Even on these plastic versions, the detail is actually really good for what you're getting. And you don't want to cover that all up with some thick paint. Lighter colors like whites and yellows can get chalky and they can dry out quickly and you can end up with a texture on the paint and it doesn't look good once it's dry and when you try to do any highlights the texture it gets a bit grainy and picks up some of those dry brush highlights and the highlights end up in the wrong places because when you dry brush you're trying to pick out those edges and raise areas so obviously we'll want to avoid that Also think about that this is a yellow, which is a lighter color. You're probably not going to get one coat and call it good. So it's okay to come back, do a second coat, get a good even coverage. I've got a little thin there with some, uh, you can see some of the little bubbles, no big deal. Clean off the brush, mix the paint, and go back. Some of those micro bubbles, they'll pop. Some of them might dry that way. I'm going to do two light coats, so I know I'm going to be able to go back and cover those up or smooth out the paint and get into the area if it fish eyes a little bit or if it dries in one of the recesses and leaves an unpainted, unpainted area. If you're painting along, or if you're following this tutorial, the other paints you're going to want to use, or that I've used in the tutorial, I should say, you want something similar if you're trying to achieve the same effect, is you'll need a black. I'm using Viejo Model Color 
deep yellow for the base coat. I'm using Viejo model color ice yellow as the highlight color. And then I've got Citadel Chainmail, which will be my silver for the highlights for this particular unit. You could also use Viejo silver or any other silver that you prefer. It's just a generic silver. And I do have a bit of a unique one. I've got a Ralpartha paint from when I was a child, or close teenager, I should say, that I bought at a game store when I was still in high school. I kept the paint up. It's Ralpartha steel, but there's a Vallejo gunmetal and some other like oil steel colors. Sorry for moving out of frame there. Some oil steel colors that will help highlight over the top of the black to give us a bit of a metallic look if you're going for that. I also pre-mixed a brown ink wash, also known as a magic wash, using the Future Floor Polish or the Pledge Floor Clean, I think is what they call it now. It's an acrylic floor polish that has a flow uh, aid in it that helps it reach, uh, reach into the cracks and crevices and it doesn't settle on the surface as much. I will talk about the mixture and what it looks like, but that really is technique driven on what you're trying to achieve when it comes to the mixes. I can give you a good place to start, but depending on how much pigment, ink, you can use paint even. There's so many different ways to do washes that I don't have a end-all be-all. I tend to just mix it until I get the consistency and color that I want. I will say this though, always err on the side of lighter. You can always lay down a second wash. spot on the foot there. So now my paint's starting to dry. I'm just going to pick out any of the areas here that have either pool paint or some of the little bubbles that are easy for me to reach. And then of course I'm looking for any spots that I might have just skipped over or didn't notice the first time under the arms, in between the leg joints, back of the knees, Top of the head, apparently. All right, so we're gonna let that dry. And while we're letting that dry, I'll talk a little bit about the primer. I use Rust-Oleum Sandable Automotive Primer, gray. I use it all the time. I also use Army Painter. Uh, I also use Krylon. Find something that works for you, something that you like, something you can get easy access to. You don't necessarily need to spend $15 on a can of primer. But if you want to, I'm not going to tell you not to. Find what you enjoy, what gives you the best results. Some of them are more humidity, uh, humidity sensitive. Uh, I had an ins incident with some Army Painter clear coat that ended up clogging on me and being a little bit temperamental so I'm not saying any one company is better than the others really what you need to do is find something that you can get easy access to you're not spending a bunch of money to order and it's something that when you when you do spray you do get the result you want you don't want it to be grainy you don't want it to go on and cause any sort of uh, crackling I've seen that happen uh, typically if you don't have a miniature clean but uh, sometimes you get a texture on the miniature Talk a little bit about paint consistency. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. I like to thin my paints in the dropper bottles. Helps them last longer. But I also almost always add water in the dish. I use the back of my brush to stir. Right, I'm going to bring this up into focus here. Let you see. 
See the kind of consistency there? I know the light's a little bright, but it should go on, and there should be some translucency. Yellow's a thin color anyway. You'll get this with reds, yellows, oranges, whites. Definitely don't want white to be too thick. That's why it's a pain to work with. Same, yellow's the next in line for being finicky. Now I'm just going on, especially the raised outer areas where there's going to be some more dry brushing later. You want at least a good foundation in that base coat. Finding the areas that were dry. I recommend that second coat be a little bit thinner as well, just to get a nice smooth texture. call that good. That's a good base coat. There's still a little bit of translucency left, but once we put the wash on and then do the dry brushing, won't be an issue. So now we want our, our base coat to be completely dry. Otherwise, if you put this wash on, it's going to get into where the wet paint is, and with the fluid, flu, fluidificant, or I'm pronouncing that wrong, I just call it flow aid, it will it will mix with the paint and you'll get this cloudy mix of stuff you don't want in the recesses. It won't be as dark as you want it and it'll look really bad. You really don't want it later on if you do washes after you've done some more work on paint jobs and things like that. But it'd be recoverable if you did find a, a spot that was still still trying to dry and you put the wash on and you were impatient. You can recover from that, but we're going to let this dry completely. I'm going to set it aside talk a little bit about the wash I made. I just used an empty dropper bottle. I've got some brown ink, a little bit of the Flow Aid. They make, Liquitex makes some fluidifiant. There we go. There's a word for you for Scrabble. Uh, I use that on occasion, but I typically just use the Pledge Floor Polish uh, or Floor Acrylic Floor Wax. It used to be called Magic Clean or Magic Wash or um, anyway, so I've got that in here, and then I've got water. I'll show you what it looks like. Clean off my brush. All right, so I, I think this is about a one part ink to about four to five parts of the Flow Aid or Magic Magic Wash Future Floor Polish. And about, I think this is about 10 parts water. Uh, some of my washes, especially if I'm dealing with black, will go up to 20 parts water, uh, depending on how strong the ink is. If I'm mixing with paint, I'll tend to use maybe a little less water because there's not as much pigment. You really just have to, depending on what you're mixing with, that's where you need to make that, that decision, but you can see the the consistency of how it flows and thins out. There's just some debris, I guess, in my paint dish that you can see it's kind of doing its little thing there that it does with the because of that fluid diffiant. You can also get Viejo's regular washes that are ready out of the pot. Um, also Army Army Painter Quick Shades. Let's take a look at this, see how it's dry. Alright, it's getting pretty close. So we'll skip ahead. I'll come back and wash that, but this is what it's going to look like after it's dry. So you can see the wash is definitely settled into the recessed areas. It's completely dry. This I did this two days ago. 
it's going to get a little bit on the surface. You can help kind of wick some of that away as you're working. It's not going to be perfect. We don't want it to be perfect. We want it to look a little bit more gritty and used, at least in my opinion. I don't think a yellow mech would stay clean. So we're going to use that same yellow. I'm going to switch over to a dry brush. I have a really old dry brush. I also have a new dry brush. So we'll see how this really old one works at first. I'm going to get some paint loaded on my brush. I'm just going to work it into the paper towel. I don't work for, for the paper, paper towel company, but I'll tell you this, it rhymes with Mountie. And I have no problems with lint or little fuzzies getting all over when I'm dry brushing. So it might be the quicker, thicker, picker upper. So now I'm working perpendicular to the raised edges where possible. You're never going to be able to get it perfect. It's, you're going to get a little bit of paint in here and there, but I'm going to be pretty aggressive with this as I get a feel for how this yellow pigment lays down. You can see here it's really starting to kind of coat, cover up on the leg. That's a good sign. That's what we want. We're trying to get it back to near the original color, but with that shadowed depth, which will translate into a little bit more realistic appearance, as well as some worn or grit on the paint. If you want clean, that's another tutorial. This is meant to be quick, easy. You see here I'm working kind of at diagonals in areas where there's some areas perpendicular to the raised edges, and if I go up and down, I'm not really going to hit those highlights, so I kind of work in a diagonal in those areas. Do this next right side first, and then allow you to see the comparison between the two and what the difference is of the same color. It's the same color, we just washed right over it. That's why I call it my two color dry brush, because you're using one color, washing, same color, and then just one highlight. You don't even need a tri uh, trifecta of paints. You can do it with two if you want. You can mix if you like, but If you want to get your mechs on the table or miniatures, this will work on. It doesn't have to be a mech. But this is a good way to get them done fast. Get a nice, decent result relatively quickly. A little harder to get into the in between the legs areas, so to speak, I guess. But since it's a darker area anyway, kind of fits right along with what we're trying to do. My tick sticky is getting loose there. If you decide to be fancy about things and you want to start kind of making light be a little more realistic, you could pick a side and just highlight more of that particular area, working like for instance this arm here and this shoulder, and then work down and then maybe not get into, let me point a little bit, maybe as much into this area, and then maybe down on the bottom side of the shins here, and you could try to create a little bit of a azimuth light effect, and then if you continue that with the highlight color, or colors, if you decide to go up, you could take this up to white if you really wanted to. We're not going to do that on this, I'm just going to use a very light yellow. But that's another technique you can do where you don't have to spend a lot of time. I lost my sticky. I'm holding it down. You don't have to spend a lot of time edge highlighting and making small little detailed 
painting area, uh, painting techniques take up a lot of time. Not to say that you couldn't, but if you're trying to paint four or twelve or however many of these, and you want them all to be a uniform color, speed versus detail in this case, but we're going to get a lot of detail out of this. And you can see now, it's starting to come along, and the difference between the two, here I'll grab a painted one here too, you can see we're working towards that, and then soon once we get that highlight on there, we'll have a nice yellow. I'm going to add a little more paint. When you're dry brushing, start out with less paint than you think you need. Take as much of it off the brush as possible, and then see what that gets you. You can always go back and do another pass, but if you leave a bunch of wet paint on there, or you have too much and it just gets everywhere, you'll be wishing you hadn't. Some of these darker areas, I'm not going to really try to send home that that yellow. Try to add a little bit of carbon or scorch marks. Got a little too much paint left on the brush. You can see some of the streaks there. Not to worry. Caught it in time. his antenna. Don't limit yourself to just dry brushing on this too. If there's a panel that you just can't reach with your brush or it doesn't look quite like you want it to, grab your smaller brush Grab a little bit of thin paint and just paint the middle of that panel. Don't go all the way to the edges. Just give a little bit of paint on there and it'll look just fine. We're probably going to have to replace that antenna, but we're not going to stop. Last little bit there, we got some areas on the top of the mech, which obviously are going to be lighter. So I'm going to switch off of this old dry brush. Let's see if we can't get the desired effect with a little bit softer and a little bit more put together, as in it hasn't been destroyed brush. Now I'm just working into those areas where I want to get a little more directed with the paint. Maybe the shadow of the head blocks some of it. But the sun never moves. I think that's pretty good. There's a couple of spots here and there where I would probably go in and maybe touch up just a little bit. I'm just going to hit a couple of those just real quick with this brush and then we will move along. So I'm going to let that dry. It's mostly dry anyway, but I want to show you the wash process that got us to that, that first stage.
or next stage. All right, back to the grasshopper. Lay it on. I'm just picking out areas where you know there's going to be a shadow. So the back of the neck, underneath the head, missile tubes, things like that. And then once it kind of does its work where the fluid additives make its make your money or make their money go in with the brush and just kind of massage or redirect some of that surface color that'll help with the dry brushing later on because you won't have all those dark raised panels to have to try to cover up again if we were doing white it would be much more important unless you like extra work It doesn't have to be perfect, but a little bit of effort, instead of just dunking the whole thing or slathering it in wash and letting it dry, you won't get a lot of that heavy cooling that requires a lot of detail painting to try to make it look a little bit better. If it's super dark in the hip or up in the shoulder area uh, or under the neck, it's going to look a little odd if the rest of the miniature doesn't kind of have that same effect. It might be something you're going for, super dirty and gritty, but I find it's easier to add or direct a small little targeted wash if that's something you're going for than to just cover the entire thing and hope for the best. Don't get me wrong, I have hoped for the best on several of my paint jobs and hope turned into extra, extra time spent fixing things that didn't go exactly the way I wanted. As you can see, it obviously it darkens the, the base coat, but really where we're wanting it is on the, or in, in the recessed areas, the cracks, areas that would obviously have shadows. jump jet ports, heat sink vents. Be mindful that when you set this down, gravity is going to do its thing, and oftentimes you're going to have big heavy pools right at the feet or just above the feet. That's why I like to work from the top down. You don't have to, but I find that if I do that, I don't end up with tons of extra wash down at the bottom that I'm dabbing away. And, or if I get distracted, I'm working on more than one. I don't miss it and have to go back and touch it up. sweep. You don't have to be really aggressive with it. It will oftentimes just go get to paint tip, the tip of the brush near where you think it should go and usually goes right there. So now I'm just looking for little areas to clean up or hit again. You don't have to do just one wash. If you if you mix your wash and it's not dark enough or not to your liking and you want to go darker, I would suggest, after it's completely dry, always completely dry, I would suggest you use the same mixture. Don't try to get a darker mixture if you weren't happy with that first wash because it will be additive and you may end up with something that's over dark or too dark from what you were thinking you were going to get. 
at least that way if you do two thinned washes and it's still not quite dark enough it's probably so close to what you were wanting that that third third wash will get you where you want to go I know that sounds like a little bit extra time and effort but again it's much easier to put a couple of washes down than to put one heavy wash on there and have it be so overpowering that it ruins the effect you were trying to get okay so that is what I did to get the quick draw to the point that you saw it. You can always come in and add a little more to the missile ports if you want to get a little heavier. You could even grab a little bit of thinned black paint and kind of just dab it in and it'll and mix on the surface to get it a little darker. Jump jet ports, same thing like that. You can also do your black highlights, or I say highlights, I should say your black detail before you do the wash if you wish. I didn't do it here simply based on time and I didn't do it on the quick draw because well I just didn't do it. So I did add a little bit of black on the missile ports. This is not going to want to stay anymore. All right. So now we're going to move on to our highlight. So that's the ice yellow. And this is definitely something you want to treat much more cautiously. You don't want too much of this paint on the flat surfaces. You definitely want to get on the raised areas only and like I was saying before you might just want to do it from a certain angle over the entire miniature not required I didn't do that on the other ones but this is one where you definitely want to make sure you have a, a very small amount on the brush I like to load up the brush first that first time around especially after using a previous color and I kind of wash it out you can see there's still a little bit of the bright yellow in there or deep yellow so I'm working that back out of the brush. You could also rinse it out and then dry the brush thoroughly between the paper towels or let it dry between coats if you go work on something else. But just to help see now we've got more of a deep yellow, or sorry, ice yellow. Now I'm just working for the, the color. All right, so I'm just gonna hit, now I wanna go perpendicular to those raised areas and I'm using a light touch. I don't want us to be super aggressive with this, especially not at first. I want to get a feel for the consistency of the paint. And you can already see that is lightening it up quite a bit. It's really bringing out a bit of depth from just the yellow alone and then add that into the brown. And we've got quite a bit of apparent detail And we've been working on this for less than an hour. Not counting that drying time for the wash, but if you do four of these and then move on to something else or go get a sandwich, come back. Easy. You can see I haven't gone back to get any extra paint. I am simply working with that little bit that I had on the brush because it's still making a good highlight. quite done, but again, comparison here. So he's in the same unit. Haven't sealed him up yet. I think this Vindicator ended up a little bit, a little bit lighter, but it's probably a better comparison there. There we go. I'm just going to look for a couple more spots. I might have highlighted a little more than I needed to, but I'm having fun what matters. It's a game and a hobby. 
have fun with it. And again, you could go and get your finer brush and do the top. I'm just going to force it in there a little bit. Managed to bend both antennas, and I'm just going to, they're, only, they're just bent. They actually aren't broken, so that's good. It's a fake Christmas tree bristles. Anybody curious as to why they didn't break? They're not metal, otherwise I would have stabbed myself a few times. So that's it for the yellow. At this point, if you wanted to take it down, you could put another wash on there and then do another highlight and get into all sorts of crazy layering and stuff. Just do whatever you feel like is going to make it look good to you. I would move on to the black. And I would put it in the joint areas, cockpit. I'll go ahead and start that right now just to show you what I would do. And really, what that black is doing is giving me a base for the steel. I've switched over to a, yeah, I'm still with a number four right now. Thin your black, always thin your black. It covers better than any other paint. Now I'm just kind of dabbing into the missile ports, a little bit of that carbon effect. Washed it off my brush there, and now I'm just going to kind of work at what's left on the surface. You can see how I'm just kind of moving that around a little bit. Try to get a shot there. Just kind of move it around a little bit. It's kind of like a wash, but basically it's just wet, thin black. Use a finer brush. Thin it out, and then it can, since your black is thin, it doesn't dry right away, so you can actually work it a little bit. Please excuse the tip on this. El Cheapo brush. I have bent it, but I'm still working with it. can do leg joints, you can add a little bit of black now, and then you can do a black wash. Move that a little bit on the edges there. That's good, I'll show you how to highlight, or how to fix those real quick. Jump jet ports. And since the hands in my other unit are black or uh, steel. I'm gonna pre-paint them in black to get the steel color, the same final color as the other miniatures. Do a little more of that carbon effect. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my brush, load it up, start in that port there where I know I want it dark anyway. Take most of that off, grab some some water, and then just work it around. Do 
you want a little more, let it dry first and go back and do it again. I'm going to finish up these hands. Okay, and if you do get a little crazy with that thin black, I just add a little water to my brush, add a little bit extra on that tip joint there. I'm just moving it back into these little vents here. I'm just making it look like it's supposed to be there. You could darken these vents or these louvered areas or whatever if you want to. I'm going to add just a little more black to these. Pretty good amount of water loaded on this brush. This is why I'm using a little bit bigger brush. It holds a little more water and allows you to do kind of stuff like this. Whereas if you have a detail brush, it kind of limits you a little bit in that regard. Not impossible, but I already have this brush out. Might as well keep using it. Okay, so now we've kind of darkened that. We've got our missile ports done. We're letting that black dry before we can put the steel on it. So we'll let that do that. Let's get into some detail. So here's that silver, that chain mail. Don't need much. These are the Canopian cuirassiers, the first, first Canopian cuirassiers. I don't speak French, but anyway, same rules apply. You want thin, thin paint. I'm using a low Cornell. Now I need to see my screen. Let me, pardon me one moment. There we go. A low Cornell round from China. These are available at Hobby Lobby. You get like six or seven brushes in a pack for like seven bucks. All right, so they have silver as a highlight. I'm gonna do a band around the head because the rest of my miniatures have, or the uh, ones that I painted up have a some sort of silver highlight on their head. And you can see silver goes over yellow pretty well. If I was doing silver over a maybe a red or a blue or something. Well, anyway, depending on how thin it is, you may have to put down a gray or a black, depending on if you want it darker. So now I've got these ridged areas here. I'm going to use the side of my brush. I'm just going to essentially just convince the paint that that's where it wants to go. And come back and touch up just a little spot here and there. And if you don't want to paint a little detailed area, don't. Keep it simple, use the big area, big surfaces, or practice and then get better then paint the detailed areas, and then do a tutorial and make me look bad. Please do. I want to learn too. I watch other people that are way more talented than I am, and I try to emulate that as best I, as best I can. I'm not creative enough to come up with all these clever methods to doing things. So there's a silver band on his head. The rest of my unit kind of has at least one highlight on the legs and on the arms. So... Let's do this. So my silver's probably a little too thick. I'm getting some brush strokes. just a touch of water to it. Also, if you let the paint dry on your brush, you'll start to get some of the clumpy metallic paint kind of working there. Continue this silver highlight around like a, a band. about 
losing the shadow detail there. If your paints are thin, you can kind of convince them to get up towards those edges, especially with practice. If you're having a hard time, try turning the miniature. I like to rest my non-painting hand on the table when possible. It makes for a steadier, steadier base. And oftentimes I try to put myself in some sort of least ergonomic angle, and then I wonder why I'm getting crooked lines. Your natural tendency is to brush in this direction. So, brush in that direction. Oh, those dudes are screaming for a silver highlight right here. I still have that wash if I wanted to. I could weather this metallic a little bit and throw that just right over the top of the silver once it dried. Add a little bit of more depth to that if you, if you find it's too bright or it doesn't really match with what you were trying to achieve. I think you need some silver back here. Getting this right here. Starting to get a little too thick. If you can, try to keep your metallic brushes and your non-metallic brushes separate. You'll end up with less speckly, shiny things in your paint. Just adding a real thin touch right there just to smooth it out with some deep yellow. Got a little too much there, but I've still got a little bit of wash. Just gonna touch it there, right here. These are jump jets. It's dirty. Have fun with it. Yeah, I probably got it a little too thin. It's cooling up. You guys are seeing the entire example of how to not not thin your paint and how to not thin your paint too much. what to do about it. Wake it away, let it dry, no big deal. Still got some of that going. Grab some steel color if you want to do steel highlights. It's a steel gray here. I'm just going to take some out of the lid. I've already got metallic on my brush. The silver is not going to overpower the steel. Now I'm just doing kind of a I wouldn't say a dry brush, but I'm really just kind of dragging it over the surface. I don't need it to be completely painted the same color. I'm just looking for a little bit of that lighter metallic just to make it interesting. Taking it right from the pot. Probably shouldn't do that. Bad view to be. Do as I say, not as I do, right? Just a little back here. So I'm going to hit. I'll show you how to fix that black spot there in just a moment. Yellow doesn't cover very well, especially over dark colors, so it might take a couple coats, but while I'm here, I'm going to put a little more on there. That little spot I kind of fixed earlier. Look around for any other little goofs, like right in there where I got silver, where I didn't want it. Okay, touch up's done. Back to just a little more chain mail. No 
notice this spot up here. That spot down here. Come back and get these just a little bit more. Good measure. All right. So, covering just a little, little bit there that I wanted to. I'm just going to put a little bit of wash on that and call it, call it done. So there you go. That is yellow with silver highlights, some depth with some carbon buildup, and some steel in about an hour. Appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very much.